All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with a match breakdown slash match reaction. I haven't seen this match yet between Joseph Chen and Tommy Langacker, but it has been blowing up Instagram. It's been blowing up Flow Grappling and the different news websites of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I'm very excited to go over it. There is perhaps no more impactful, emphatic, and prestigious tournament series for submission grappling in the world than ADCC, and I am just so excited for the direction that it's going, so let's just jump right into it. So Tommy Langacker... And the red rash guard. Joseph Chen. He wears, I mean, he's got a mullet and wearing the spats. Apparently, he had a, an incredible run. This is the semifinal. Tommy, you expect Tommy to pull guard. I, I expect that. Tommy has the such an incredible flexibility in his legs, and he's displayed that a lot in the gi, but also in no gi as well. I'm really impressed by how how well he's consistently doing. You see him even going for like a look like a nogi loop choke there for a second. Joseph Chen, he kind of popped on my radar a little bit with Aiga. Did very, very well down there. And representing B team. Man, B team is heating up, bro. It's also interesting to see how Tommy kind of transitions the guard that he played in the in the gi. To the Nogi, you see him trying to throw like the deep Dela Heva hook all the way through. And Joseph's just sticking on this knee cut. And this is something that a lot of competitors are doing. Here, let's let's go back to just a second. So this is something a lot of competitors are doing. And this is important to, to notice. Look at this left arm. The left arm right here of Joseph Chen on the hip of Tommy Langacker is super important. As you guys can see, he goes to the side, and that is what if Tommy has to disengage the guard. He has to use this foot to push off on Joseph Chen there because of the usage of that left arm. See, that's what makes it safe for him to go to the side. Do you see how he, p he puts that arm there? That's what makes him safe for it to go to the right side. It kills this left leg here. So then Tommy has to, because Tommy has this great ability to bow his leg out, he has to put his foot on the shoulder. He has to disengage all attacks. And then look, right back in there once again. Joseph Chen just consistently looking for that hand on the hip so he can continue to pass to that right side. And it's, and it's that way on both sides. That right arm is always going to find a home. If he wants to proceed with that knee cut, that is borderline necessity. Now you see Tommy trying to utilize his hook grip. Look at the adjustment. He utilizes this hook grip on the elbow, and now he's going to try to turn it into a tilt sweep. And that's just the small adjustments that are made at the super high level. But Joseph is just transitioning. He's trying to use the hand on the ankle to find the space. Look, he's going side to side. Oh, my goodness. And look, look, look at this hand. Look at what it's doing. You can see it right there. Look, look at this arm. Just pay attention to the left arm. Look at Tommy's right leg. It's useless because of that left arm. It's not able to do much because of his effective left arm. And then whenever Tommy brings it back all the way around, it, almost throwing like a lasso. In the gi... You see, watch, even right there, it's a huge example. This is a huge breakdown. But look, in the gi, he might be able to hold a grip, and this might this situation might not happen. Do you see how every time he brings his arm around, Joseph can just disengage it? In the gi, and that might be a gi reaction by Tommy, It he can always pull his arm out, pull his arm out, pull his arm out in no gi, but in the gi, you throw a lasso, and this pass is mitigated. So he's able to just freely just keep his right arm on the hip here. That's kind of where, and that helps him, you know, stay away from the, the leg entanglements as well. But now look at this, transitioning to more of a, of a tight passing. It's a bit of a strange position as well. But he's keeping his center of gravity very high above Tommy. And so it's, it's not very comfortable for Tommy to elevate him over the top. That's why he's trying to push him forward. Transitioning at X guard, beautiful. And immediately dealing with the foot back into the pass. Look at that, that was beautiful. Look, so Tommy does this beautiful under the leg setup, elevates, transitions to X guard. Pretty conventional stuff. Joseph kicks out this foot to retrieve his balance. So he doesn't want to get swept with the X guard. So he kicks out his foot. Look, and Tommy wants to transition this immediately into a leg reap. Makes sense, right? So as he goes to transition this, here, let's turn the sound up 0.5. As he goes to transition this into a leg reap, look, Joseph 
immediately brings his elbow in. Look at the reaction. Slow motion. Even slower motion. <laughs> but look, even slower. Look, he kicks his leg out. We're going to see this. And this is that stuff that's just like the difference between you getting heel hooked and not, right? But look, Psycho's leg out. As soon as he goes, look. Elbow in. See that? Tommy didn't have the space to bring his foot all the way around, but he's trying. You can see he's pointing his toes, trying to bring that around, and just immediately deals with it, brings his elbow in. And immediately back on the guard, passing, cycling his leg through. And mind you, this is great by Tommy, too. I mean, Tommy's defense, his guard is so hard to pass, but Joseph just keeping up once again with that arm on the hip. And staying creative, too. Like, now he's trying to throw his, his right arm under. He's staying with that same beginning option that is working very well. But he's also keeping his hand on the hip. Because that, that hand on the hip is working well. But now he's going for underhooks. Trying to transition to a little bit more of a tight idea. Tommy back in this position once again. This is a hard position to stop, actually. It's very awkward. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Just go straight to mount just like that? Just like that. Wait a minute. Okay, so this deep underhook, obviously, it's a huge victory. Right? He gets over the knee. Tommy kind of pushes away and frames off with that left knee. Oh, here's the deal. So, look, this head on the mat, do you see how his center of gravity, his hips are up here. Tommy cannot safely elevate because this head is a post. This head is the post. So, look, as Tommy goes to try to elevate a little bit more, he presses his hips down, and he's able to, as soon as Tommy starts to elevate a little bit, whoopsie doops, as soon as Tommy starts to elevate just a little bit, look at that, just cycles his foot over the top. Very small, small movement, and gets right into mount. And that was, oh, wow. That was right. Let's see, because it's a six-minute match. ADCC rules, second half of the match. Man, that was right after. That was directly after the points came into effect, too. This is a great referee, by the way. Man, this is tough, man. Three points for Joseph Chen. That's incredible. Passing Tommy's guard right into mount, too. This kid is the real deal, man. And now from here, the thing is, is he's in mount, man. And he's going to continue to fight for the fight for the ability to finish the fight. But look at that. Tommy tries to escape and goes right into mount. And this is the cool thing about ADCC. You're going to see, I believe you're going to see, Three more points come on the board because he escaped, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly. So, look, just like I said, this little thing, this this little... And this is the thing you got to be so careful about in ADCC rules is, look, he escapes for a second. And look, he didn't even barely get out. It wasn't even really... It was barely even a guard. But he escapes, gets put back him out, and that's three more points. Joseph Chen can rack up points... Like... You take the back in ADCC, and you just take one hook out, put it back in. One hook out, put it back in. You can rack up points that way. Uh, Big Dan's done that, multiple different opens. It's a strategy that I think a lot of people are conditioned by the IBJJF rule set. Because in the IBJJF rule set, you cannot put a hook in, take it out, and put it back in, and get more points. They have to remove the hook. Your opponent has to force the position to change via some sort of escape. And so I think people are conditioned to that because it was the prevailing rule set, especially in Nogi, forever. And ADCC used to be only the trials and I mean, only really the trials and, and the World Championship. But now we have the Opens and people are becoming more privy to the rule set. And you're seeing the metagame of ADCC change based off that. It's incredible. And look at that. The referees, Joseph Chen has passed the guard twice, right? And referee calling for action on top. Now Tommy turns... Joseph finds the back, immediately gets the body triangle. That's pretty That's pretty conventional stuff right there. I mean, almost slips off the top a little bit. So Tommy, look, finds his base. He's trying to get his hook out. Joseph immediately reacts by crossing his feet, and he looks for the seatbelt. He looks to reorient his back. That's super important for taking the back. The hooks are not as important as the seatbelt, and Joseph knows that, so he gets the seatbelt and then gets the hooks. Even though he already had them, but he's looking for the seatbelt. He's attacking the seatbelt, which is super important in this, in this situation. But man, up so many points on Tommy Langa. This is, this is a good, a, an amazing competitor. Tommy scoops up that leg. I like that. 
Now this is kind of an un that's kind of an unconventional uh, body triangle escape, I would say. So this this part right here, trying to turn his hips away, that puts pressure on the lock. Oh, there we go. So beautiful. This, as you guys can see, look, he's bringing his hips this way to loosen the body triangle here, and then he shoots his hip back the other way. Watch, shoots it back the other way and wraps. But now something that I don't think a lot of people would be advised to do, especially at the lower level, is he reaches down and he, and he hooks it. So Joseph Chen actually reacts, brings his body triangle back, but Tommy finds it and hooks it in his arm so that he can peel out the other leg. Man, that's very interesting. Let's see how Joseph reacts to this. This is impressive stuff, man. This is high-level jiu-jitsu. Oh, that is horrible. That coffee is so bad. Yep, turns it into a fundamental escape. Turns in the ability to put his back on the mat. But interesting, kind of puts himself in a crucifix on his way out. Oh, but turns and ends up on top. That could have been a bad situation, I think, with, with perhaps a little more leverage from Joseph. But now we'll see Tommy Langacker trying to pass him on top. Joseph keeping the feet in front of him. Very good. Now, Tommy not employing, at least right now, the same methodologies that Joseph was. Notice he kind of, he kind of it's almost like the, uh, it's the idea, you know, you're down on points with a minute left, like how you would pass if you were down. You're just throwing the kitchen sink at him. It's hard to stay composed when, you know, like to, to, you don't have a lot of time to think or analyze your opponent's guard. I mean, this is the first time Tommy was on top. The whole match was in the last minute and he's down by nine. It's a tough spot to be in. And then diving for the back, that's another thing too. I mean, diving for the back, Tommy Langacker, such an amazing back taker, but one leg. And all Joseph has to do for the last 40 seconds is, is kind of chill. Especially going into the final. I mean, he's going to be fighting Oliver. But even then, look, wraps up a leg. He can take his time on it. And Tommy's going to be looking for a heel hook. It's hard to see what Tommy's doing on that angle, though. Like, like what's happening with the foot. But in 50-50, 18 seconds left. Man. This is, pretty, this is very, very impressive. I mean, Joseph Chen, I, I don't even know if a lot of people really, really knew him leading up to Aiga. Um, but, wow, he is really fun to watch as well. Like, his technique is on point, works hard. Craig Jones and everybody at B Team is really doing some amazing work, man. And... Uh, I'm very impressed. This was this is a very good match. <laughs> Look at that. I want to see that real quick. Look. Look at the timing on this. Just shucks Tommy over the top. Tommy is trying everything to get out of the way. And he just shucks him by. But once again, just really trying to dive over the top. And it it's good attempts, but it's too little too late. Even passing the guard would have been too much at that point. But Man, I'll tell you what, I really liked what I saw. Joseph Chen is an incredible competitor. I'd like to do more, more match breakdowns. Uh, I hope that this was an effective way for you guys to learn. That really hurt my finger hitting my mic just now. But I hope that it was an effective way for you guys to learn. Let me know who you'd like to see me break down next in the matches. I will be putting uh, this content up on my website, disciplebjj.com. You guys can follow me at Jake Watson Media. And be sure to follow Flow Grappling. Uh, subscribe to them on YouTube. Subscribe to ADCC Official on YouTube. Visit their websites. Subscribe to flowgrappling.com to stay up to date with all of the news, media, articles, all of the replays of every event that's streamed on their platform. I'm excited to continue to bring all this. Uh, be tuned in for more episodes of the Open Guardcast as well. And also for me to learn how to speak English better because apparently I stutter a lot. Thank you guys so much. Love you. God bless you. Have a good one.